So we've attached our strap hooks to their new location. And now we have to repair the holes from where they were, right here and right here. So the first thing we have to do is sand. Just get some sandpaper, uh, heavy grit is probably better. And uh, make sure you wear uh, a mask like this and some uh, gloves if you have them because uh, this is fiberglass and glass fibers you know you don't really want to be breathing them in or getting them in your lungs so just to be safe wear a mask and then we sand So, the reason why we sand is because we're going to be applying uh, new fiberglass and you want the new fiberglass to be able to adhere to the existing fiberglass. So you have to take off the finish, you have to take off the paint that was applied after the, fi or after the fiberglass uh, cured. That's why you sand. Um, try to use sandpaper and not an electric sander because electric sander has a tendency to go really quick and take a lot of material off at once and you also want to be able to feel uh, the fiberglass to make sure that you're not going through uh, you know deeper than you want to because you just want to take off the finish enough so that it's like this so that you can see the original fiberglass the color and uh, the new fiberglass has something to bond to so now that that is done we have to cut our fiberglass to fit. Now what I have here is a piece of uh, fiberglass weave, is I think what it's called. There's a lot of different types of fiberglass, um, but primarily we have weave, which if you look closely, uh, you can see that the fiberglass is actually weaved like a rug. And there's also a fiberglass mat, which consists of pieces of fiberglass just all in different directions, kind of matted on top of one another. And there are different thicknesses and different uses for each of these. Um, I am not a fiberglass expert by any means. If you want to learn more about fiberglass, there are a lot of instructional videos on YouTube that you can check out that will teach you the differences between the different thicknesses and the different types of fiberglass and the uses for each of those. But for my purposes, this was something that I could uh, purchase at a local hardware store and it does the trick. You know, I'm not repairing Ferraris or making boats or anything like that. And the repair doesn't have to look perfect. Um, it just has to be functional. So for my intents and purposes, uh, this is completely adequate. So what you need to do is take some scissors and you want to cut the fiberglass. And you want to cut it into small pieces that you can apply to the area that we've now sanded here and here. And you want to start small. You want to start by filling in the places where there's damage. In this case, the two holes. So cut small pieces to fill in the holes, and then you gradually build up the fiberglass. So we're going to cut one. And we're going to need three small pieces. To initially go over the holes and try and fill in the holes. Like that. And then I want to layer a larger piece over the entire section that's damaged. So I'm going to have two strips about that size. That. And then I want to have a larger piece that will look better and um, cover this entire area 
to again reinforce it and give it more strength. So I'm going to cut a bigger square uh, about four centimeters, five centimeters wide. So we'll go here. Okay, so now we have our fiberglass pieces. I don't need all, any more of this. So I'm going to put these over on the side so that they're ready. And now, and now we're going to mix our hardening agent, which will look like this or something like it. This again, it's all part of a kit that I purchased for doing fiberglass repairs. You can find similar kits, I'm sure, at hardware stores where you are. They also sell both of these agents in much larger uh, volumes uh, for doing lots of fiberglass work. Like I said earlier, if you were working on boats or repairing cars or something like that, that's what you would use. But for our purpose, this type of small kit is more than sufficient. And it will tell you how much to mix of each a hardener and uh, some other agent. I'm not really sure. An epoxy resin. An epoxy resin and a hardener. And this is for a fiberglass cloth, which is what we have purchased. So it'll be perfect. And it's a uh, 100 to 30 ratio. So let's mix that up. Be sure to wear a mask when you're doing that. Okay, so I had to get some more materials. I wasn't quite prepared. We need a cup and a uh, paintbrush and then we have our hardener and our epoxy resin and a little mixing stick so be sure you have a mask too to protect yourself from the fumes and let's mix <laughs> you want to mix until it turns milky white like that. Get all the air bubbles out of it. Let's move this stuff out of the way. Now we apply the resin first. To the damaged parts. And we take our small parts of fiberglass and put them on the holes. Take more resin, and adapt that on there. You can never, you can't, you can never use too much resin, so don't worry about that. And I'm going to take our smaller pieces, lay that on top, and add more resin.
Anderson over here. Add our larger pieces. Actually, it's a little too large, but we'll go with it. Now obviously I went very quickly when I did this and I got a lot of resin off the um, the fiberglass itself and it looks kind of messy but that's why I was trying to um, push the uh, fiberglass fibers back up again because after this dries we'll be able to sand the fiberglass but you don't really want to sand the epoxy because you'll be sanding the, um, the original case again but we'll see. Uh, even if you do sand it, we're going to paint it anyway, so it might not have that much an effect. The main thing is they have to get a lot of epoxy over the new fiberglass and cover it completely. And you'll be able to see that the fiberglass, the new fiberglass, starts to turn, um, uh, not opaque, the opposite of opaque, clear. And you'll be able to see, you can start to see the, um, the black finish from the case coming through the fiberglass. And now we have to wait for this to cure and then come back when it's done. So we're back and as you can see we've had some complications. It seems that in my haste to upload a how-to video I have inadvertently created a how not to video. And uh, the problem is if uh, you want to rewind the video back to the place where I mixed the epoxy with the hardening agent, um, I didn't do it precisely enough and I didn't have enough hardening agent in. So what should have cured in about an hour or so um, actually took about five days and it's still, it's still a little bit tacky. But that's what happens when you do things, when you make things or fix things. Sometimes you have to uh, fix what uh, what you messed up. So let's give it a shot and we'll keep going with the process because it would be the same uh, if the uh, the fiberglass had hardened correctly in any case. We're going to do the same thing. So you can see how it's done and then uh, just be careful to mix your epoxy uh, mixture correctly when you do it at home. So now that this is uh, cured and dried we're going to take some uh, sandpaper again and go over it and try and smooth it out and make it look uh, as nice as possible. Again, try and wear your mask and gloves. I should put gloves on and a mask on because we don't want to get these glass fibers in our lungs. <laughs> So you can see as we sand it, the, uh, the pattern on the fiberglass is gradually getting worn off and we're starting to blend in um, height-wise to the rest of the case. And that's really what you want to look for. We're not going to be able to get the same pattern as the case it was originally because we're not fiberglassing it the same way. But if you make it smooth enough and then paint over it, it should look okay. So that's what we're aiming for. So let me continue sanding this and uh, we'll cut back in to the video when I get it all prepared for paint. Okay, so I've finished sanding and I've taken the new fiberglass down to approximately the same uh, level as the original case. So if you run your hand over it, uh, you can barely feel that it's there. I was also able to take some of the excess uh, epoxy resin 
off that had dripped and um, also took the liberty of masking up the hinges and the uh, strap hooks that we relocated the other day so that they don't get any black paint on them because now we're going to paint the case again. We're going to first put down a coat of plastic primer so that the paint sticks and then let that dry. I'm going to go do that outside because I don't want to use the, uh, the primer inside. So we've primed the case and the primer has dried and now we're going to take some black gloss paint which uh, should look pretty similar to the original finish and we're going to paint over the new fiberglass and then let it dry and we should be done. So let's go do that. Okay, so our paint has dried. So all we do now is take off the taping tape that we had to prevent other areas from getting black paint all over them. Masking tape works better. I didn't have any, I just had this um, double-sided carpet tape. So I used that, but tape is tape. And there we go. As you can see, if you look from a distance, it's barely noticeable. And uh, looks like it was made that way. Holes are gone, and it's been repaired with brand new fiberglass. Like I said, I'm not a fiberglass expert. I'm sure um, you could do a better job if you had more knowledge. But that's how you make a quick repair or a simple repair, rather, on a fiberglass case. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.